Welcome to Finite Element Methods. Today we'll be discussing the element performance for solid mechanics problems. I'll be looking at 2D, but this also applies to 3D. So this is what happens when you have a triangular elements that you're using. And I just discussed that triangular elements are constant strain elements, CST, constant strain elements. Uh, if you use triangular elements, you, can, you may run into an issue that I want to discuss. So say I apply a load in this direction, a load in this direction, that causes a couple, which causes a bending load. Now I could, apply, I could also apply a point load to get this to bend. That's fine, but this is the way I did it here. And the point here is I wanted to induce constant bending moment so you can see something interesting. What you see here is an oscillation from red to green. At the top, you see an oscillation going from blue to green and so forth. Obviously, that's not how the system should behave and it makes no sense. The question is, why is that happening? So when you use triangular elements, linear triangular elements, you have to be careful because these triangular elements have constant strain across the element. I already proved that to you in the previous example. So here you can see B bold for the triangular element is fully constant. It does not depend on anything. Uh, so it cannot represent a gradient across the element. So the element will be undesirably stiff if you don't use enough elements and produce slow convergence. It cannot represent pure bending uh, because you get a constant stress uh, instead of a, a gradient. Uh, it has non-zero stress on the x-axis. And you get this spurious parasitic shear stress. So let, let's discuss what is going on here. Uh, so let's see. So it can only be a constant strain triangle. So the bottom surface is in tension. Think about that. Bottom surface is in tension. So that triangle has to be in tension, has to be positive strain. And you can see that happening there. But the top surface has to be in compression, but a single triangle through a thickness or half the thickness has to somehow give you a negative value. And as a consequence, that's why you see this strange pattern that's not realistic. And you're gonna see the stresses oscillating in this manner. That can happen and it can cause uh, incorrect solutions. Linear quadratic elements also have their own problems. For example, here, you can see a Q4 element being bent. I have to apply bending to this element. And you can see here that this element will bend in this manner. The real behavior though, is that this edge has to deform in this manner and this edge has to deform in this manner, but it can't. So that's gonna run into a problem. You're gonna get element locking as well. So the variation of strengths is linear only in one direction. Therefore the element sides remain straight that will result in a changing angle, which is not real. You can see here, there's a changing angle that's just not quite right. And that will generate a spurious or unrealistic shear behavior. Uh, you can see that here that this angle change is occurring. Well, in real life, that angle change does not happen. So why? Because I'm not able to, I'm not letting that edge curve like that. I'm not letting this edge curve like that. So you're gonna change that angle, which shouldn't be happening. The Q4 element will resist pure bending by developing both normal and shear stresses. And as a consequence, it's gonna result in a behavior that, that is just too stiff. Uh, the results will converge uh, better than the CST element. So uh, here, if you see a single element being used here, that's not gonna work very well. I did the comparison here. You can see that when I use a Q4 element, uh, this stress was 4.49 E7. But when I use more elements through a thickness, Q4 element, two elements through a thickness, and Q4 is linear quadratical quadratic elements, sorry, linear, quadrilateral elements, you can see here that the stress went up higher. And when I use a second order element, 
things improved quite a bit. Uh, that increased even more. The triangular element, second order triangular element actually did a good job compared to Q8, uh, but the linear triangle element is way off, very, very stiff. So again, one element through a thickness not very good because I cannot represent this behavior. Two elements got better and then using higher order elements got rid of these problems. So in other words, higher order elements are better if you can use less elements through a thickness of a bending problem. Uh, and you should be very, very cognizant of those issues. I'm just showing you here really quick uh, the tip deflection compared to, and the error that you get against exact solution. So uh, the CST triangular element, 34% uh, error, too stiff. The Q4 full integration element is only 11% off, but it's still too stiff. The Q4 reduced integration element, which means use, just use less integration points that you're supposed to use, is too flexible. But when I go to higher order elements, you can see the error just got almost to zero. So it's good. In other words, use second order elements if you can, but if it's computationally expensive, you may want to start looking at trades. The second order element, the Q8 element, pro produced very good results. Uh, displacement field is interpolated with quadratic shape functions. It, you're able to represent a linear strain gradient so that the bending can be accurately represented. Very accurate without having to reuse, reduce integration, but very expensive computationally. Now these days with computational power and more to come, you're able to, to do a, a good job there. Uh, you can refine the solution. Uh, so you can increase the mesh density and by increasing the mesh density and reducing the element size, you're able to get a better solution to the problem. You can increase the order of the polynomial as well. So going from linear element to quadratic element is called the P refinement, while increasing the mesh density size called the H refinement. P comes from the polynomial describing the displacement field. And in essence, when you go from first order to second order, we're just saying that we're using P refinement. Well, if you increase the number of elements, that's called H refinement. So this is from Hypermesh, like a little picture from Hypermesh, uh, a code that's used. And I like it because it shows the various element checks that you need to be doing. One of the problems is that if you have a lot of distortion of an element, it can introduce errors. And so this, why? Because you have to calculate Jacobian and the Jacobian is going to become quite uh, ill-conditioned. If, if the mapping is too far away from a Q square, uh, say the quadrilateral element is too far away from a square uh, in terms of shape, then the element could be too distorted to the point that the Jacobian is very hard to calculate. So uh, distortion of the elements generally decreases the error uh, the Jacobian calculation using quadrature is usually inexact or approximate. Uh, that's, that's the issue is that this Jacobian calculation is just an uh, inexact or approximate solution. The aspect ratio can result in stiff behavior. So if I have an aspect ratio that's quite dramatic, that'll really result in stiff behavior. Excessive distortion, warpage, and curvature can result in inaccuracies in the solution. Uh, and and lead to a lot of problems. Here you can see warpage being a problem where these nodes are just all over the place. Um, if the nodes are too, the mid side nodes are way in one direction compared to another, not towards the mid node, that's also some sort of distortion as well. But but all, all of these need to be checked by the code and, and usually codes do these checks for you to make sure that the Jacobian is going to be calculated. You can calculate it and you won't have a problem. Pay attention to make sure that the nodes are connected there as they're supposed to be. Incompatible meshes can be used, but if a crack is not intended, make sure that it does, it's not there. Uh, make sure the edges are tied instead, so everything's tied nicely. Uh, I have a paper that shows how you can basically tie a very coarse mesh to a fine mesh in, in 
use the fan mesh in the area of concern, a coarse mesh far away from the area of concern. That's really what you wanna be doing. Uh, just spend your mesh in areas that are needed. Don't put the mesh in areas you don't need it. But in general, in general, uh, this is very important, this element checks. And again, higher order elements, better element performance, triangular elements not as good, the linear triangular elements, second order triangular elements and second order quadrilateral elements, Q8 and Q9, do a fairly good job. Uh, but pay attention to those triangular, triangular linear elements, which uh, if it's too coarse, you can start getting locking behavior. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and you can apply this in real life and be careful when you use that mesh. Make sure the mesh is tied, is, is working correctly, and you don't have any cracks that are unintended. You have a great day and I'm looking forward to the very next lecture, which is axisymmetric elements and shell elements coming up. Thank you so much and enjoy your day.